What's up, party people? Welcome to a very special episode of Honest Trailer Commentaries. Uh, this is the show where we wa- uh, talk and watch about, uh, what am I saying? I'm just so excited. Dan's here. Look, it's Dan. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's not a rerun. It's really me. Hi. <laughs> Look, uh, if this is your first episode, it's going to be a weird one, uh, but you'll catch on. Dan, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you guys? It's great to see you. Yeah, we're great. We're still in our boxes, as you can see. Yep. None of us have moved. Um, and uh, and I the moved. Pe- you did, <laughs> yeah. yes. You moved You're a physically totally different box. Yes. Physically, emotionally, and, and, and digitally, because the people can now find you on youtube.com backslash Dan Merle Movies. That's um, correct. The greatest, uh, uh, I, I dare say, the greatest uh, 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 movie channel on the internet. I'm not even gonna. Uh, I'm not even gonna add any reservations. It's the greatest channel on the internet. Oh, wow. I wouldn't even say that. That's thank you. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd say go watch Mr. Sunday Movies, but I'd love if you came and watched <laughs> me too. That'd be great. <laughs> so uh, we are. Uh, we're here for a for a serious reason, though. We're here to talk about uh, the Honest Trailer for Lost, which you have been working on for a really long time, right? Like you've been in the lab yeah. for a, a few months. It's been cooking up, you know, back when we were all working together, when people would ask stuff like, why don't you do movies like Lost or TV shows? We'd always say like, well, we don't have enough time. Well, it turns out during the pandemic, when there's no movies coming out, um, I had enough time to, <laughs> to watch Lost and, and uh, work on the trailer for it. So yeah, this has been cooking for many months. Many, yeah. many months. Yeah, we and, finally finished Doctor Who, and then immediately we <laughs> yes. were like, lost, next up, exactly. let's go. Get right yep. back on there. Um, now, I, uh, I probably, I didn't have too much time, but I probably could have had enough time to fill in the blanks in my cultural knowledge, which does not include Lost. Mm-hmm. I've seen two episodes of Lost. One was the finale, and the other was where a, a British musician dies on a boat. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Be- so, yeah, That's his name accurate. is Charlie. Yes, yep. the band's name is Drive Shaft. <laughs> Put some respect yeah. on his name. They seemed like lovely episodes. I didn't get what all the fuss was about, but I do one day. Well, no, intend- you wouldn't. It's yeah, shocking yeah, exactly. that coming in at the finale, it didn't pay off for you. I'm amazed. I watched the guy die in a boat, and I thought, not for me. Um, <laughs> I like my deaths on land. Uh, <laughs> But and Joe, I believe you're in somewhat of the same boat. Like you're not a lost. Uh... I have also died on a boat, Spencer. Um, uh, <laughs> Much yeah, like you, Jin. You've seen two more episodes of Lost than I have. Oh wow! Oh, but man. I also missed Dan a lot. So That's the I'm thing. Yeah. To come. <laughs> We both missed Dan a lot. Um, this was uh, uh, there was input from people like Lon uh, and Danielle who have seen the show, mm-hmm. um, but we just wanted to say hi to Dan. <laughs> hi. All right. Bye. Sure. See you guys. Dan, what do you think? Of- have fun watching the trailer. Dan and Lon, <laughs> what do you guys think about the the TV series Lost? Over. I was I was it was an obsession for me. I was one of those Lost maniacs who would watch it every week and then go online and look at the breakdowns and the screenshots and go on the forums and read uh, Doc Jensen's article on Entertainment Weekly. Uh, I mean, I was I was obsessed. I was deep, deep, deep into the show. So I was a real time viewer, which is going to come into play uh, in the trailer because there's one particular criticism that I make that I see pushed back on that I think is unique to real time viewers. Um, so I was obsessed with the show, very obsessed with the show. And I've kind of done a bell curve on the finale. Like I started out like that was amazing. And then I hit like some pretty low lows on it. And now I'm kind of like back up toward the middle. So it's been a very interesting journey. I've probably seen the show all the way through, including this time four or five times. Well, there you go. So what could what could noobs like us add to that insight? Uh, Long, Long, what's your what's your last take? Uh, I got into Lost while it was on TV. I think towards the end of season one, I was like, all right, all right, I'll get into this thing. Everybody loves it. And then, yeah, I got I got really hooked. It was the show that got me into after shows and get and in communicating in real time with a lot of people on the internet about what you were watching. Like I think probably the very first podcast I ever listened to that was specifically about a TV show would have been about lost. And like Dan, I would like week to week when there's mysteries and there's new stuff and like, what the hell is that four toed statue? Like I would be on the forums and try to figure it out along with everybody else. Um, I've only seen it twice all the way through uh, you know, once when it was sort of like on TV and then I went back a few years later and like watched the whole thing, start to finish again. I'm not, I, I think the first four seasons are like, ah, yes, delightful. I, I, I think that's where it gets creaky to me. And I, I do have some issues with like the last season. I think the problem is more the last season though, 
than the finale episode. Like, I don't know if we'll get into this more, but I really like the finale. It's really more like, I, I feel like the last season kind of jerks you around rather than coming up with a satisfying way to like draw all the threads together. Yeah, I mean, it Good seems job. like um, it's kind of a, just a recurring thing. It, it, it's more often than not beloved TV shows end poorly. Um, and I think that there's an economic reason for that is that they keep getting renewed if they're popular until they're not popular and they're just like, oh, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll end it now. They're not writing towards something continuously. Um, yes. But Lost I mean, that is, you could yeah, tell with Lost that they weren't like, by season four, which is still yeah. really good, I think you could tell like, oh, they are just every year they're coming back to the table fresh. And like, how do we, okay, here's where we're at. Where, where do we go? And I think even today, like Lost was so influential in its moment. Like it was that first generation of peak TV where they were sort of doing these season long multi-season arcs and really getting into it on that level. But yeah, today, even today, I think you would have more of like a, flight plan like, i'd like to see yeah. what lost was if it were made five years later because I mean, that's very much what they were doing was they they got they got it it was like every other tv show they got picked up for 22 episodes a year and then maybe they get picked up for another 22 and they actually i think in toward the end of season three going into season four they went to abc and they were just like okay listen we're spinning our wheels here we've got to start building towards something and they were i think they were one of the first shows to to not do to say we're not doing 22 on network tv that cable yeah. had obviously been different but on network they're like we're not doing 22 we're doing 13 in this season and we're doing 11 and then it all got upended by the writer's strike and they had to change everything um but yeah it it, it did set a lot of precedent in that way where they just kind of said like we don't have we can't do 22 a year with this story we're gonna do fewer and now like a, a lot of shows do that well i would have yeah, liked to see lost that. if it uh, i would like to see lost if it came out uh 20 30 years earlier and they had to do like 46 <laughs> episode seasons and well, it's uh, gilligan's like, oh, island oh look yeah. there's bob hope on the island next yeah. door yeah he's gonna <laughs> literally gilligan's island the harlem, yeah. Globe, the harlem globe trotters what <laughs> well, are you that, doing here it, that's who's in the hatch <laughs> it's really fascinating to me how quickly that has because that's the mandalorian sort of like it's it's there there are ongoing plots but it is it's very like episodic week to week like what tv used to be and it's amazing that people are so thrown by that we've it, it only took like one generation for us to like forget that that's what all yeah TV but i mean it's a, like. it, it, the mandalorian has like 10 million dollar in episode production budgets um which no, i also so, would have liked to still, see for gilligan's island <laughs> it's still basically like have gun will travel it's like what's that poachers bothering your ranch <laughs> i'll be right there like it's just that every week and like and that's fine it's like la law like there are plot lines but then basically Vincent it's like Price. <laughs> i gotta sue this yeah. guy and he's sort of famous and you're like all right that's where we're at this week yeah well it's part that and part you know people being like character work where's my stuff <laughs> where's i'm a star wars fan i want stuff yeah uh sometimes yeah, you don't want all the answers that but you do. Uh, so with that, let's start our honest trailer for Lost. From creator J.J. Abrams comes an iconic turn-of-the-century TV show that became a pop culture sensation, featuring a first season that had viewers wondering, what's in a box? And a time-traveling final season that left most fans disappointed and confused. Felicity. <laughs> oh, and also Lost. Wow, JJ so did that pause. I, uh, admission to make, I was not a watcher of Felicity, but I, re I remember when it was on hearing that like the last season they did like a time travel thing. And I was like, oh, that could be interesting, like an interesting parallel. And then I was reading more into it and I found out that like in the first season, they just like Lost, they had this box that was like this big plot point and it never was like literally a mystery box that never got explained. It's like, OK, that's an interesting. So, yeah, I, that does not come from a place of information on Felicity, but. I tried to do my research there. It seemed like a very such a story. weird genre thing to dump onto like, I don't know, like a CW ish narrative <laughs> show. Like if well, Gilmore the, yeah, Girls the, had turned into an inception plot, like in season three, <laughs> the final season of, of Felicity, I, I remember is like basically made against his will. Um, like he wanted off, he was done with it. So he's like, all right, I'm going to turn it into a completely different show, somewhat out of spite, which I always support. Well, I think they, if I recall correctly, they were just like, all right, JJ, you're done. And they were like, wrap the show. And they're like, actually, no, uh, we want like 13 more. And yeah. he was just like, 
all right, I'm just, I guess I'll just restart and s- start over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, very it's amazing with the mystery boxes. Like when he's developing these shows or pitching them, does an executive never ask him what's in the box? Like, is he able to razzle dazzle them and be like, like throw some glitter in their face and run away? Like, how does he keep getting away with this? Apparently, yeah. He's a snake oil know. salesman, Spencer. J.J. <laughs> Abrams sits down in a room and he's just like, you know what you need? You need this box. It'll razzle dazzle. Well, he, yeah. he had that, what was it, like a TED talk where he talked about yes. this? And like, yeah. you know, it's basically like you don't ever open the box. That's the, that's the like philosophy of it that... On some level, it has to stay a mystery, or it's going to be lame. So but I guess they shouldn't be literal. He's right. Yeah. Can we at least go to metaphorical mystery boxes and not yeah. literal containers? We get into the Chekhov's gun problem of yes. kind of, if you show people a box, the box you got to open the bo- the physical box. It's yes. Point. Yes. All right. Let's keep going. Yeah. Wow, JJ did that twice. How does that even happen? Prepare for a zeitgeist-defining drama that started with one simple question. Where are we? Then ballooned into so many more. What is the Black Rock? What do the numbers mean? What is the monster? Who are you people? That bird just say my name. What is a Nigerian priest doing in an island in the South Pacific? What happens to pregnant women on this island? That even the creators eventually got tired of answering them. What do you mean, get back here? What do I mean? Eventually, folding now, in. Now, pause. Um, my my role in this honest trailer was uh, was small and eventually insignificant, but I think it's an interesting story. Um, we wrote a section of uh, uh, of all these questions that uh, that people had about um, about the series, yep. and uh, I was able to get in touch with a certain. Uh, person of influence on the show to see if they would like to come on and answer them or give a, give funnily flippant answers to uh, mm. some of the mysteries of Lost, the questions that they've been asked over and over again. They declined. <laughs> they, did, yes. they, they were not interested in coming on and uh, mm-hmm. and giving anybody answers funny or serious or, yeah. or not. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think... Um, it was fun to write that email, though, with like, if you could ask this person your questions about loss. And I was like, yeah. lickety yes. split. I'm on it, chief. Yes. <laughs> I got a couple. I got some thoughts. Well, and I also love, I don't blame them, but, you know, as the, you know, as the the creative, uh, the beginning creative force by the episode, it was particularly pleasant to read the feedback that was like, well, you know, in, in a very kind way saying like, we don't find any of this particularly original or interesting or yeah. something that hasn't been said or asked before about the show. I'm like, I'll take it. Oh, you know what? I've been lobbing some criticisms too. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. I will. I do have to say though, of all those runs, the question runs I, I, for me as a fan, the, the, the Hurley bird, as it was called amongst the fandom. Mm-hmm. And you saw Hurley said that bird, just say my name is the epitome of why are you putting this in the show is they put a bird in the show that flies over and makes a sound that sounds like Hurley, which is mm-hmm. why he says, did that bird just sound my name? Mm hmm never mentioned or explained ever again. Uh, yes. And that's where I think when people get frustrated with the questions, it's not that they had questions, it's that they had meaningless questions that were inserted yeah, right. somewhat randomly. Yeah, think- you, you did get the feeling that there was a thing where it was like, there was not even, it wasn't like, okay, we have to fully explain that right now. But there wasn't even a like, are we ever going to be able to, like, it was like setting impossible stuff for themselves that there wouldn't be any way for them to really explain. Almost like they were, it was like a challenge that they <laughs> yes. were not up to. <laughs> and like, I think that's the part that irks people. Like a little like threads that don't get tied up, I think is one thing. But it introducing happens, yeah. like crazy Talking out there birds. stuff that you have no plan for. Yeah. Um, and that's why I didn't jump in because kind of at the height of Lost Mania, I was like, okay, do I need to go to Best Buy and buy seasons one through three of Lost <laughs> on DVD for, you know, $50 a pop? And there was a, there was an interview with the, with the writers where they were basically like, we don't know. We don't know where it's going. We're just kind of throwing stuff at a wall. And I was like, yeah. oh, that, that seems like a cheaty way to go about your show whose premise is what does it all mean if you well, don't know 
Yeah, they said that. And then I remember toward the finale, as we were getting down to like single digit episodes left, people started asking like, well, what? Like there was like a list of like, here are the things that haven't yet been explained. And a lot of the response from the from the producing and writing team was just like, well, the show's not really about answers. It's more about emotional satisfaction. Right. And we're like, oh. whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, Hang on. Answers. You made a show about questions for five and a half seasons. And now, now you're telling us it's not about the answers. Like, some what am I, like, what am I doing with my life? Some stuff is crazy. There's a, there's a bit in season two, Joe and Spencer, where they're, they're like a bunch of our central characters are on a boat trying to get away from the island and another boat shows up and just starts shooting at them. And we never find out to this day yeah. who was in that other boat. What was their motivation to shoot at them? I don't think you can, as a responsible writer, write that. Like you can't write that scene and not in your own head be like, well, who are these people shooting? I, don't know, at I think you could put motivation? that in a really any island based piece of fiction and, and it works. Just you gotta have a cast thought. away. Just a boat starts shooting. Are they yes. pirates? <laughs> are they people from so like I, I not having a thought yes. Truman me Show. is irresponsible on some level. Imagine uh, Castaway and Tom Hanks is on the cliff with Wilson right. and then like someone takes a shot at him like a yeah. bullet just zooms just by like, and, like a, a red dot on his head yes. yeah. like, oh, and then he just goes cover. home and never mentions it's it again. It's never explained. He stands yeah. in the middle of the road with the FedEx boxes and the movie ends and you're like, wait a minute, who was the sniper on the island? <laughs> like, I feel like I, sh I don't think it's yeah. unreasonable that I should be get the yeah. answer to that question. Well, it's also kind of a blessing, though, that this didn't come out uh, 10 years later because, you know, it was on ABC, right? Yes. It was. And on Investor Day, they'd be announcing uh, uh, boats, the boat series, uh, Hurley's <laughs> Bird, the series, oh, yeah. uh, I, I Hatch still, People, the series. To this day, I am, I like, I always expect this. Like, and that's one of those things that I feel like any day we're going to, they're going to be like some sort of animated thing or a prequel thing or like, I don't think Lost is dead forever. I the think they're going to reboot this yeah. show. At they're some point, gonna we're going to go show. back to the. We're going to go back. Yeah. I know that much. Hey, we have, we to, have go to go back. back. All right, keep going. Eventually, folding in on itself like a question singularity, as the writers booby trap this tropical hell with literal mystery boxes and one mystery whose answer is still an actual question mark. I want some friggin' answers! Us too, dude. Us too. Return to the island, a mysterious monster inhabited death trap that no one will shut up about. Welcome to the island. Everything I did, I did for the island. The island killed him. The island isn't done with you yet. The island isn't <laughs> done with you yet. The island's not done with the shit. Yeah, we're not done with this island. And meet these plane crash survivors who probably shouldn't have flown the same airline that got hijacked in executive decision. This is nice Oceanic camp. 343 Heavy requesting emergency landing. Their son and Jim. So this uh, grifter oceanic uh, oceanic is apparently it's it's it appears in other movies as well prior to mm -hmm. lost oceanic was like the 555 of oh. movie and tv airlines where you know if something bad was going to happen to a plane obviously like delta or american airlines is not going to put their name on the plane so yeah. right. oceanic was kind of for a lot of people like the go-to airline and then this movie or then this show came out and you, then it's just it's the lost airline, so they ruined it really, for the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If anyone else uses Oceanic now, it's like, oh, so it's a cinematic universe. Uh, <laughs> then it's not, yeah, you right? Didn't I think that happened once? Right? There was another show where it's like, is this plane going to the yeah. Lost Island? Like, no, think, yes. dummy. It's just it was <laughs> yeah. just a generic name that they threw on planes. Right. Not and anymore, they never though. so they never named the island. It's like that was one of the mysteries. That it's the island. It's the, the island is yeah. the island. The, the island. only actual, aside from a couple of notes on trims and timing. My only written contribution to this trailer, none of you actually got because <laughs> my joke pitch for the island run was to end it with The Rock saying dramatically, welcome to the mysterious island. And then I was like, I don't think any of my friends have seen Journey 2. Journey 2, I've seen it. Starring The Rock. Yeah. It's <laughs> one of so the starring names, I think, right? <laughs> it was not sent to you. Oh, fair enough. Never self-censor, Joe. Come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I would have seen We've all seen the Brendan Fraser slash Dwayne The Rock Johnson franchise journey to the center of whatever. It just makes me want to go to um, fast casual burger franchise uh, islands and get a burger with a piece of pineapple on it. Wasn't there also a, re a bad reality show or something called... There wasn't there oh, Temptation no, was Netflix, Island? No, there was a Netflix show called Island that you hated. Yes. Oh yes, yeah. The, it was the Neil Labute did it. Neil Labute did that. The I the Island. Land. Yeah. <laughs>
I, well, and the one thing that I didn't write in, I thought about putting in was that there were there were a succession of shows on ABC following Lost that were the next Lost. One of them mm. was Flash Forward. Yeah. Oh yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Flash Forward was like this is the next Lost, and then it lasted yeah. like one season, and then. V, and there was the, like, the, yeah. the good one that was about all the people who disappeared, right? The, um, on HBO. Uh, oh, yeah. The, uh, not the 4400. The, the Missing? Is that the... No, it, but... Lindelof there, yeah, did there, that one too, right? The, the there one there one yeah. so many of Honestly, them. they're still doing this. Last season, ABC had Emergence. Was that what it was mm-hmm. called? With, uh, yeah, with uh, Allison Tolman. It was the same. It was like, mysterious plane crash. And then this child appears that doesn't seem to have come from anywhere. Like, was it a sci-fi anomaly? Like, they're still trying to, like... Yeah. Well, it also like, seems like there's a million of them now. Because now we've started remaking other countries' versions of Lost. <laughs> like, France had a show. It was like, these people vanished a year. They haven't aged. What happened? Yeah. And then we remade it. Yeah, there's like a zillion of these now. The Leftovers. That was what it was The called. Leftovers. On <laughs> HBO. <laughs> Yeah, oh, right. but the French one is all just about uh, uh, it gets really into French uh, age of consent laws. <laughs> That's what it ends up being. <laughs> well, the leftovers is also <laughs> Lindelof. Like yeah. the leftovers was like a lost yeah. like guy did did that. I love. I it. think Lindelof's come out, you know, smelling like roses with uh, with leftovers and then um, and Watchmen uh, and Watchmen after this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think we still we still ding him at the end. Let's let's see. We do. Uh, let's we keep do. going. With we this give trailer. him praise and well, we'll get there. <laughs> Their son and gin, this grifter too, the millionaire, and locks knives. Whoa. The music star, the confessor, and scary man here on Gilligan's Island. <clears throat> Sorry, where, where, where were we again? There's Jack Shepard, the I tortured spent doctor, an embarrassing amount of time <laughs> to good. come up with <laughs> a joke based on a 50 year old television. Yeah, show. and it, it's tricky when you um when you write uh, stuff for John to sing because it's a it, it's a real coin flip whether he uh, whether he knows the the song or not. But this one, man, he he yeah. dove right into it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then the question is like, where's the transition? Does he sing the whole thing? Does he start in the middle? Like, yeah, for a Gilligan's Island joke that. I, <laughs> I, I that's I'm glad it stayed in. Trying Man, to come up with buddy. a way to work the Harlem Globetrotters in, but it didn't, it didn't materialize. <laughs> Were they on Gilligan's Island? Yes, yeah. the Harlem Man, Globetrotters. Yeah. The Harlem Globetrotters show up on Gilligan's Island at one point, of they course. Did. What a weird time in television and in <laughs> basketball history where yeah. they were the go to crossover. Yeah. <laughs> Course. Yeah, Scooby Doo, Gilligan's Island, Harlem yeah. Globetrotters. Oh, yeah. Everybody, the Harlem, the, they would show up on your TV show. Yeah, they're, it's in the name. They're the Globetrotters. That's what right. they do. They trot the globe and they meet people. <laughs> That's true. They're and they're occasionally play basketball. Yeah. Where is the <laughs> show about the Washington about, Generals? Yeah, where is the show about the Washington Generals snapping? About <laughs> should be, it's Jeffrey like a Cobra one. Kai type. Well, show. But, you know, about the Washington so Generals. <laughs> That'd be great. I love I, this. My, yes. my understanding was that they're like the understudies. They're they're globetrotters in training. So it's like you want to be in the big leagues. You want to win a game. Like you got to get dunked on for two years. <laughs> Uh, Every time I think of the, I didn't even think of that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I think about the Washington Generals, I just think about the Simpsons when Chris is like, "Crusty, you bet all your money." He's like, "Ah, oh, they were due. They were due. The Generals were due. Spinning the ball on his finger. <laughs> he was using a ladder for crying out loud." <laughs> uh, I was once uh, dunked over with like seven other children at a at a. Um, uh, Harlem Globetrotters game. Yeah, Never got nice. over it. <laughs> you and Sweet Lou out there. <laughs> yep. All right, keep going. Jack Shepard, the tortured doctor who ultimately turns out to be a likable hero. Sawyer, the tortured conman who ultimately turns out to be a likable hero. Saeed, the tortured former torturer who ultimately turns out to be a likable hero. Kate, the tortured murderer who ultimately turns out to be a likable hero. Charlie, the tortured drug addict who... Hang on, these are all the same people! Even the objectively evil mass murderer gets a redemption arc. I forgive you. Thank you, John. That does help. Eh, oh well. I guess we still have Nikki and Paolo. Razzle dazzle! Ah! They suck. <laughs> Witness All right, pause. Show. I love that That's clip. A... Context free. I love just... <laughs> That her saying razzle dazzle. Do you and show, Joe right? know? Yes, that's from the show. Yeah. Do you and Joe know the, the saga of Nikki and Paolo uh, on Lost? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this was during their growing pains of the third season, I believe, the third or fourth season. I think it's three. They, they were running out of. They had these main characters, and they were running out of things to do. So they literally have these two characters, Nikki and Paolo, who one day on the beach 
kind of run up from the jungle and they're like, what's go literally that what's going on guys. And they're like, Nikki, Paolo, go do this. And you're like, what the hell? And then, and then it's like, <laughs> we've been back there the whole time. And they have like an episode where it shows like where they were in the background. And it's yeah. like a crime story where they're like, they're smuggling diamonds. What? And, they and they're, lying hide, they're stashing diamonds on the yeah. Island. They and like one and a half Lost. This is like uh, uh, yeah. like season two of Friday Night Lights, well, where MTV wait. was like, "Have somebody <laughs> yes. kill someone." There has to be a murder. They, they were they were like one of them was like an actor though, so there was like a show yes. within a show, which is what that so, clip is from. Nikki was an actress, and she right. was on a show co-starring Billy D. Williams. Yes, um, that was kind of like Fox Force Five, the right. Pulp fiction TV show, mm -hmm. uh, and so and Paolo was like her lover slash they murdered a guy, and then they had diamonds, and everyone hated them so much that they 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 after like 10 episodes they were literally buried alive it's, after it's, being paralyzed from a spider bite yeah. Both it's of, real it's, life poochie uh, it's like actually it's, poochie that yes. they added these cool new characters and everybody was like i hate this and then they were like oh well we'll murder them and then you don't have to worry about them anymore like Yay! it's the exact, it's the poochie yes. art and they get buried alive and it literally is like Nikki Apollo are dead. They're never coming back, folks. Like, yeah. it was that explicit. It was amazing. And it was very shortly after that that the news came out that they had gone to ABC and said, like, we need to set an end date. Uh, so in, in, in many ways, Nikki Apollo was, was the impetus to them to say, like, we need to end this show this because this work. is not going well. Land the they, plane. They could have pulled it off in, in like season one because you had your characters you got to know. And then there were a lot of like extras on the beach in the background. Mm -hmm. We were like, presumably other people were yeah, on this, the more this people plane in coach, yeah. and like they could maybe introduce us to them later. And there were a few like Mr. Arndt or whatever, like peripheral people yeah. you meet briefly. Frogert. Um, Right. But by the time they tried to pull this with Nikki Appel, it's like, no, no, you're way, you you're not there. way past your cell <laughs> by. There's no way there's people on this island that we just haven't seen. You got to crash months. another plane into if you're yeah, short on like, characters, yeah. just crash right. another plane. Or Which they did. Gilligan's and... Island did where it's like the Harlem Globetrotters team plane crash lands on the island and now they're there. <laughs> In season two, that's what they did. They crashed the other half of the plane on the island, and they were like, "Here's what was going on on the other side of the island." Mm. So they'd already done it once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the they second were just season, running out of because they, just... they were fighting, right? The back half and the front half. Well, no, they were like trying to find each other, and then there was a third okay. group called the right. Others that they were uh, fighting. There was a group well, that listen, was already on the island that they yeah, didn't okay. know about yet, but we got we... it. And like all that is fine. It's just like you, you've got there's reason. There's a limit to how much we can. Just how accept. incredible it's... though could Nikki? Of Paul and Paulo have been if throughout the first three seasons of the show you were actually seeing this weird shit happening in the <laughs> background all the time you're always like what are those two doing that's weird yeah. That were bird just said razzle dazzle. <laughs> <laughs> were they counting a bag of diamonds in the background? What was yeah. that? And then they, somebody, that's the sort of thing that, like today, you could do because yes. you yeah. know you were going to get more episodes. You could plant stuff like that yeah. for yourself Lon, to like, pay off later. Lon, are, are you suggesting that people should watch Netflix's Giri Haji? <laughs> Yes, which I does am. that well which, oh my god there's one i'm not gonna say what it is there's one moment like that that is like Mwah! like the thing they dribbled in in episode one that they pay off all right stay on all target right. Let, let's right. keep watching lost right. here you have gary hodge razzle dazzle ah! they suck <laughs> with this a show trying to figure out what it is in real time as it veers wildly from a character driven drama about plane crash survivors we can't live together we're gonna die alone to a gritty showdown between two warring factions. This is our island. To a whole season set mostly in cages. Okay. Also season three. Mm. I remember that. I saw, I saw, I did see some cage stuff. <laughs> to a yeah, mystery no, that was by awesome Bluefield Flash Forwards. They're referring to you as the Oceanic Six. To a sci-fi show about time travel. I'm from the future. To an epic final battle between two immortal brothers who fight over pulling the plug out of the island, which will unleash <laughs> evil somehow, while our main characters all meet in the afterlife so they can go to heaven? Really? It's complicated. But every time you're ready to walk away and swear you'll never watch again, the show will deliver a moment so epic. I love you. I think that's I the one. You. We have to yep, go back. So we saw you. Oh, you son of a bitch. You'll forget they devoted entire episodes to Jack's tattoos, Charlie's visions, Zombie Saeed, and Hurley trying to start a van. Okay. So, pause. I mean, that's, that's just a function of having, back on. 
having too many episodes. Oh, go ahead, Dan. Hurley's trying to start a van. I've seen a lot of people say, like, Hurley trying to start a van is one of the best episodes of the series. And I will say, if you're watching the show all the way through, it is a very good episode. However, I, if I may defend my stance here, that when you're watching the show in real time, Hurley finds this van in the jungle and he it's, it's like a metaphor for him fixing up cars with his dad. And, and it's a very sweet. It's a great character episode when you're binge watching the show. I would like to point out it was in the middle of the third season, an aimless third season with characters trapped in cages. It was the episode immediately following the worst episode of the show, which was the how Jack got his tattoos episode, which was completely pointless. Uh, and, and so in, in the context, I have, a, I have a bias against that episode because when I was watching it week to week, after the whole debacle with Jack and his tattoos the week before, now it's a whole episode with Hurley in a van. And I'm like, what the hell is going on with this show? Like, this is ridiculous. So I will, I, if, you're watch, if you're binge watching the show, the Hurley van is great. But I think that there are probably some viewers that watched it in real time that may have been a little frustrated by that. Yeah. Episode. Like, is it like real... the it's like the the fly episode of Breaking Bad where I was gonna you know, say it's yes. Terrence and Philip not without my anus. Like you're <laughs> yes. at this point where you're really waiting for some reveals <laughs> and to move this thing forward, and it's like yes, taken it on its own, this is fun and enjoyable. Yes. I like it, but not now. Like you gotta. You gotta, you gotta give us something now. I and forgot about that without my anus. Yeah. <laughs> retroactively, you understand why that van is important, but in real time, you right. don't. It's just yeah, an no. abandoned van in the jungle. That's yeah. an episode on rewatch that gains a lot, but that I agree. The first time I saw it, I was like, when are we gonna get to the fireworks factory? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, tangentially, Joe, I finally saw Orgasmo for the first time this weekend, and oh, I, I couldn't stop thinking about you watching it with your dad. <laughs> 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 what just, a good bonding moment that must have been oh I mean, it was that's, just that's me not like you got trick down. it's called orgasmo how did you not know uh well briefly joe the story okay so uh i rented uh orgasmo and was like this is hilarious and then because i was like this is a wacky comedy had no problem with leaving it in the vcr and then my dad later was like joseph uh, uh, I need to talk to you and like gave me this whole weird uncomfortable talk about porn and, <laughs> uh, and I was in big trouble because I'd left this porno in the VCR and I was like damn this isn't a porno and he was like it's called orgasmo <laughs> and I was like no it's a hilarious comedy I'll prove it and it was literally like a reverse you're gonna smoke every cigarette in this carton <laughs> I just made my dad you made your dad watch all of orgasmo <laughs> like, no <laughs> and, uh, to prove it's not a porn <laughs> yep uh i think uh 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 by the time someone farted in someone's face or i think by the time choda boy put his helmet on my dad laughed and i won there you go <laughs> congratulations thank nice, you nice very much you. well done i won I, victory I, in life <laughs> i understand now now i fully understand okay back to lost start a van oh! But no matter which era of Lost you're watching, get ready for six seasons of stories that all unfold basically the same way. Where we start with an extreme close-up of someone's eye, then someone comes running out of the jungle. Whoa, 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 you're good right there. Right before it starts to rain. Then someone beats the crap out of Ben. You know what I love! Don't do what you need! Don't! Someone tells Locke what he can't do. Don't tell me what I can't do. Don't tell me what I can't do! Don't tell me what I can't do! Kate cries. <laughs> if I may, hey, Evangeline Lilly, she got a very thankless role because, again, when you watch the show all together, uh, Kate's character is, it, it's literally like they're just like, what should Kate do uh, in reaction to this scene? They're like, I don't know. Cry. cry like she cry. <laughs> it's like she cries she lit her reaction to everything is like and kate cries was like every script and eventually lily pulls it off like i mean she she she's a lot is asked of her on an acting level and there's a lot of crying on the show i'll grant you but kate seems to have been given most of the crying to do. it's it's weird like i i kind of felt for her as well by the time you get to the end of the show it's like the Kate Jack Sawyer story, it's so, it's just so repetitive. Like they don't move it forward. It's basically, she likes both of these dudes and they both like her. They can't quite figure out how it should work. 
for six seasons. And like, you, you would think that there would be more of a rise and fall that never really happened. So they just don't have that much to play. It's like, they're kind of always playing out the same two or three scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. They should have just gone full thruple. Just, or, I mean, you're I on mean, the, you're on the Island. Yeah. She dates like Jack Sandals, one Jamaica. season, then she's the Sawyer, and then they try a thruple, and then none of them are, t- they're all dating other people. Like, that's what you got to do to keep this thing uh, moving. You know? if I, I mean, they island. literally go back to the 1970s at one point. The, 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 the time when the, the thruple would not even, they would have blinked an eye at a thruple. No and yet, uh, yeah. no. If yeah. I was, yeah, if I was on an island where there was a smoke monster, birds were saying people's names, maybe, all normal, it's all off. It's like, yeah. <laughs> The clothes, yeah. everything. It's all, everything's Ruffles, off. Yeah. Uh, be naked and unafraid in <laughs> yeah. a couple weeks. Yeah, I do, I do feel like if this show was today instead of when it came out, there would be like a little bit more. Like, it's still very much like, and then these people couple off, and then these people couple off, and then these two pair up. You would get, I think, a little bit more of like, eh, I mean, do their off. clothes, do they island. get like, oh, look, some, some old Navy shipments like washed up on the shore, or are we to believe that they just... Un- withstood years and years of uh, the elements in the same outfit I mean, they were traveling. They find... Are you asking if the hot pants from the Simpsons happened? <laughs> 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 they do find clothes. They, they find clothes. Well, it's, at some yes. point they like rav- they scavenge all the bags. And so they're like, oh, we got a bunch of clothes from these bags right. that came like with the plane. They find and... the, the luggage other people brought. But also, as we've said, th- it turns out there are other people on the island. There is like a town there. And so like they yeah. eventually come up with ways to explain. There's a town? Yeah, well, technically the town is on the adjacent <laughs> island, uh, okay. but yes, there is civilization. And oh, yeah, people... you mean island town? It's uh, it's on the yeah, next island Cape over. <laughs> I, literally, that's kind of one of the reveals. Is like yeah. next door, there's an island town. <laughs> no, Where'd you yes. get that Starbucks? <laughs> oh, there is town. a scene <laughs> after like several seasons where you're just on a tropical island where they just walk into a town. That does yeah. happen. <laughs> that is actually one of my favorite uh, reveals is like the the others, which are like the people that they're battling, they set up as like these like dirty, grungy, like island inhabitants. And they're literally just people with like fake beards and old grungy clothes. They, and they, they find they like a locker like with all their stuff in it. Stowaway. Yeah. yeah, they're, they're mm. castaways, but no, they've just been living in a town. Yeah, yeah. nice. All right, keep going. Hey, it's gonna, it's gonna be all right. <laughs> And there's a team meeting where Jack gives a speech. Every man for himself is not going to work. Everything's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. Just have to be patient, okay? And leads a group into the jungle where something happens that causes them to run. 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 Run! Kate, damn it, run! Not the bees! Until a yeah. mind-blowing episode ending reveal punctuated by a Michael Giacchino music sting that sounds like every sound ever made, all played at once. <laughs> lost! What? I can't be the only guy that shouted lost every time, right? So I get forget, lost I forget that revis- this was, uh, Lost was, uh, my, for me, Michael Giacchino's origin story oh yeah lost. Mm-hmm. that's, a, that's oh. like that like that's where he he made his his big splash was doing the music for lost but i, I, I still did feel like it, it still to me like defines his sound it like, is very much his sound it's yeah. yeah like whenever i hear him doing something else it's like it's like 80 percent lost still it's great music to be fair oh, i mean yeah. like i know we're having a little fun with it there but i mean it, it was it had a symphonic sound to it uh well, yeah i mean it, it goes it, it's worth saying like that's what to me, like going back even now stands out as like the the technical aspects of loss. Like in terms of it really is like you get why so much TV became so much more cinematic yeah. after this. Like Lost set a new standard for like basically being a movie on television. Like it looks mm-hmm. amazing. The sound is amazing. The cinematography is fantastic. Like they did, however, they were still asked to execute visual effects on a TV budget. And some of it looks sure. really bad. Yeah. Look, really bad. Like today, looking back on that era in digital effects. Sure. Okay. Yeah. You're watching it on like an SD, you know, 20 uh, inch TV. Um, <laughs> if you're lucky. Not 1987, Spencer. <laughs> no, yeah, it was still like widescreen. <laughs> yeah. I'm behind the times. It was one of those widescreens, but it had four feet of television behind it. Those really yes. Yes. Exactly. yes, exactly. Man, all right, keep going. 
So get lost and revisit one of the shows that ushered in an era of peak TV that was doing audience favorite anti-heroes before Breaking Bad, genre-driven viral marketing before Heroes, and unpredictable character deaths long before Game of Thrones red wedding its way into your heart. It's like the Dear Sister SNL sketch. <laughs> All for the free and team that gave us the geniuses behind 2009's Star Trek, HBO's Watchmen, and Netflix's Daredevil, who were also the same geniuses who brought us 2019's The Rise of Skywalker, Ridley Scott's Prometheus, and Netflix's The Defenders. How can the same people do things so good and so bad? Unless their plan was to intentionally destroy all the established franchises from the inside, paving the way for groundbreaking original television like <gasps> Lost. <laughs> I they, they failed. Matthew, the, definitely uh, a Fox. the Lost Pause. The Lost Writers Room. They were like the the go tos for so long. That's why you saw like Damon Lindelof and uh, like. Uh, uh, Carlton Cuse and all the writers, Drew Goddard, and they made some great stuff. But like for a while, it was kind of like the it was kind of like the Simpsons thing. Like you put a bunch of executives in a room, and they're like, "Who should develop this?" And they like close the door, and they're like, "Lost guys, Lost guys, yeah, okay, yeah, Lost guys." <laughs> Get us someone like the Lost guys. Go brainstorm. So the Lost guys, great, Lost Done. guys, great, great, yeah, yeah. Lost like guys. Like yeah. the kids in the hall of premiere television. Yeah, pretty much. Like they everything, every script, every new f franchise, every hot idea had somebody from Lost attached to it. So it was bound. They were bound to be mixed results. Yeah, I mean, but that's 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 Hollywood, baby. You just need yeah. to do one good thing, just one, and then you're David Goyer, um, or <laughs> or pick Akiva. Akiva what's Goldsmith. his face? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you're just the go-to guy for anything, even tangentially related to that genre. But I do think that they've. They've acquitted themselves more or less well. You know, JJ, yeah. eh, I don't know, not so much. But I think the other ones have uh, uh, have done some good work post-Lost. Well, that's the frustrating thing. Like, I think it would almost be better if, like, everything they did was sort of down the middle. Like, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. For me, it's like the contrast is what's been so hard for me to, to grapple with is, like, JJ Abrams has done some of my favorite things in the world. And then with little to no middle ground, he's done some of my least favorite things in the world. Yeah. And that and like and that goes to, with like Lindelof. It's the same thing. It's like it's just so it's not so much like everyone has ups and downs for me. It's the disparity between the two. It's just like it's yeah. sometimes I'm like, oh, how does that happen? Obviously, because I wrote that part of the trailer. This is just me venting, really, just about my <laughs> my life and life. Glad to give you that platform. Yeah. Um, all right, let's let, let's keep going through Star. Lost. Starring Matthew, definitely a fox. Professor X. Oh, that's a that's a callback to what World it War Z. It started out with it started out with Vivica, definitely. Vivica, a definitely fox. not a fox. Uh, yeah. I, and then mm -hmm. there was uh, or not fox. actually a fox. Not actually, um, yeah, Vivica, not actually a fox. <laughs> and then it's like that. It's an old school honest trailer joke. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, keep going. Fox, Professor X, Middle Earth. Who's the fictional band that's a hit with all the fans? Drive Shaft. You're damn right. The Snack from Iraq. Gambit. The Campfire <laughs> Diaries. The Love Boat. Dude Perfect. Dude. 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 Uh, dude? The kid's gone. Ben Solo. Billy D. Williams? No new Pope yet? Aw. Concussions. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Final destination. You're gonna die, Charlie. You're gonna have to die, John. Richard said I was going to die. Mr. Whitmore told me Richard Albert said that you were going to die. The miracle of birth. <laughs> this was weird. Just the number of Damn it. Birth number scenes. of birth That's scenes it. that were very oh, similar. Oh, <laughs> penny. Push, push, push. Push harder. It was like the whole thing that you thought Pause. they were gonna pay off more. There, there's right. a lot of stuff on the show about pregnancy on the island and giving birth on the island. That that is another example of one of those things that they never really wrapped their we their did, all. We did not find out what happens to babies on the island. Well, we did. We found out that pregnant women on the island died, and then there was some sort of a because there's no modern medicine. <laughs> no, it's 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 more like some weird, inexplicable thing that you, it's you, some energy. You see, there's right. a plug on the island, guys. Sure, um, there's a plug on the island that 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 energy comes out of, and it's a crazy energy. But when you pull the plug, then evil 
can leave. I think this is um, the plot see, of Mist. There were, there were. It's like Rick and Morty. There were two brothers, two, two brothers. brothers, and one of them, two, but both of them were immortal. Yeah. But they had a mom. But but then one of them died. But not yeah. really, because he because he turned into smoke. And then, then there were there yeah. were two brothers, and then one of them is a dead. And becomes Locke. Locke is a brother. Locke is a brother. And now there's, a, there's there, and now there's one brother. But then now there's two. It's it's it yeah. was just it just came down to two well, brothers. The and problem is there's eighteen <laughs> quadrants, and there's only nine. Jan Michael Vincent's. So, uh, <laughs> just not. They might be riffing on that Native American folk tale that everyone has two brothers inside them. <laughs> which and which brother wins? Two <laughs> polar bears on their island. Whichever brother you feed you know, becomes the big brother. Yeah. Uh, okay, keep going. Oh. <laughs> oh, push, 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 push. <laughs> Friendly log. Oh, Charlie. Hello, James. Hello, Desmond. Hello, Saeed. Hello, Benjamin. Hello, Jacob. Hello, Echo. Hello, Hugo. Hello, Jack. Hello, Rose. Hello, Richard. Hello, Kate. I just killed a chicken. Nick Days. <laughs> how long was it, Freckles? How to score the house call, Dr. Quinn. You sure know how to butter a man up, Steak Pop. Sulu over here is packing a suitcase full of salted fish. You want me, hot lips? Welcome back, Dr. Wizard. I think it's Mr. Wizard. Shut up, Pillsbury. Cool hand. Deep dish. Chachi. Sally Slingshot. Bar wow. Bar. Kenny Rogers. What's your problem, Jumbotron? Shut up, Red Nick. Man, a writer's I have to say, in need of therapy. Pause. I My I felt a little bad for Jorge Garcia because. Yes, the character of Sawyer uh, is very mean to Hurley oftentimes and makes these jokes up in character as a mean way to insult his weight. But uh, uh, the writer's room still has to basically sit and make fat jokes about Hurley all the time. <laughs> I felt a little bad. Like, all right, we need a dozen fat jokes. Come on, exactly. what do you got? What do you got? Like, <laughs> yeah. If you, I mean, if you're if you're if you're flipping through the script, you know, if you're horny, you're just like okay, and you just like every script is a fat joke about you. Like at some point, I think the excuse of like, Don't but he's a guys. bad guy is gonna run a little thin. Like, yeah, but come on. Yeah, I, I feel like this guy gives everybody hilarious nicknames. Is one of those things when you're writing a pilot, you're like, brilliant. This is gonna give me a fun runner and then by the time you get to season three you're like well, what was i doing with the nickname thing my god it's like <laughs> how do you keep that over so many seasons it's like you've written yourself into a crazy dumb corner like now you've got to write hundreds of stupid nicknames for everybody <laughs> that sounds fun it's yeah. like starring. Well, like, it right, it's like, like their own little starring every Yeah, week. like in Avengers, you could parcel that. Like Iron Man only has to do it once every like movie or two. But in a TV show, it's like, ah, oh, he's around people. What's he going to call him this week? Yeah. He'd be calling people nicknames constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Why doesn't he make fun of his horrible personality instead? It's all this. <laughs> well, probably stuff. lots you could make fun of. Let's be honest. Okay, keep going. Problem, Jumbo Tron. Shut up, Red Nick Man. A writer's room in obvious need of therapy. My mother was crazy. Well, I guess we don't always turn out like our mothers want. How come you never talk about your dad, John? There's nothing worth talking about. What, your dad never taught you to use a hammer? No, my dad taught me how to drink. Do you have a dad? Everyone's got a dad. Is he cool? No. Dude, that guy's a total douche. That douche is my dad. And Michael <laughs> talking <laughs> about his son. Many. They're not taking my son away. They took my son! They took my son. They took my son. They took my son. They took my son. They took my son because of you. I'm gonna get back my son. I have to get my son back. <laughs> I'm going after my son. He's my son. My son! Where's my son? I want my son. It's my son. No! <laughs> lost. No, really, I'm totally lost. Can you explain it again? Very quickly. Maybe Jim would have... Talking about short-sightedness, that was the problem with Walt, which is that in the first season, Michael has this son named Walt, and it's set up that like he's special, and he's got special powers, and he's very important, but the writers didn't think about the fact that their show takes place over the course of a month. Like literally the Whoa. first two seasons are only are a month, a month wow. and they cast like a 12 year old kid who grew up and the, you can't be like, Walt, oh, you walked behind a tree and you got six months older. And so then they had to keep <laughs> Walt off screen 
Uh, but then you had to drop the whole storyline about how he's special. And then the entire second season is literally that run of Michael just being like, I got to find my son. Wow. I got to get my kid back. I got to get my kid back. And, <laughs> yeah. then, and then they had to like write Walt off the show completely because they're like, well, we can't explain how and this you kid never, is 15 now. <laughs> and they never really put a pin in like what exactly. Like, there's a while where they're, they're teasing like Walt's the reason they're here. Like yeah, Walt's wow. the key to the whole mystery of the that's island. The and that's why, the that's why that's why the plane had to be brought there. Like they needed yeah, Walt no. there to make something happen. And then it's just, just dropped. It's just like, ah, forget Walt. He didn't matter anyway. Yeah. You can't just, you can recap. What about all this kids? other stuff? Uh, Don Draper had different kids every, uh, every season. Yeah. Right. Bobby Draper's different every season. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, all there's right. a lot of that through the whole show loss where it's like that magician's trick of like, oh, 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 what am I doing with my other hand? It's like, we still know that you've got the coin in that hand. Right? <laughs> you, you, you haven't moved your hand. You, you still have both like, hands out. Like, there, I, I'm right. not, I know. Uh, Sorry, teller, but. Uh, <laughs> pens over there with the, with the rabbit. All right, keep going. Maybe Jin would have survived if he just learned to stay off boats. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. Well, bravo. Well done, Dan. Thank you. Thank um, you. Very well done. Uh, I, I. It makes me want to watch Lost. I don't feel like. Uh, uh, I know a lot has been technically spoiled, but I, I know it won't stick when I watch, and I will be shocked and delighted. Uh, That's crazy. Uh, like, uh, on volume, it's still a good show. On volume, it, it, I, it, it doesn't quite congeal as much on my this latest rewatch as i'd hoped it does still feel slightly herky-jerky and episodic but on uh, not episodic meaning week to week i mean the show literally is just like well, now we're this now we're this and now yeah. we're this uh but it, it on volume i think it's still a pretty good show yeah, when it really connects do. it's yeah. amazing and there are a lot of individual episodes that are all timers like yeah. fantastic it's really yeah. just as a whole it's like eh, it's spotty Based uh, purely on just watching the Honest trailer, I have my theory on what the show's about. Can I bounce it off you two? Yeah, what do you got? Everything in Lost is all the elements in Lost, the characters, all the weird stuff going on, the boat that's randomly shooting people, the plug. Um, These are all the creative things that J.J. Abrams wanted to be working on instead of doing the last season of Felicity. (laughs) And that's that's why the arc is similar. That's why some of it doesn't wrap up because some of it's just like ideas he wrote in a notebook and never got to revisit because he had to do that extra season of Felicity. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, Joe, I I wouldn't have mentioned this except that you nailed it. The last scene is actually, it zooms out and it's a snow globe held by Felicity. (laughs) It turns out that that's exactly what's been happening. Yes. And, and then that whatever, zooms out, some... and it's it's just a, a story that Felicity is telling her hairstylist as she's getting a perm. Yeah, yes. like, Don't you think that'd be a cool idea for a TV show? <laughs> and then that zooms out, and their salon is in a kyber crystal in a lightsaber, and Ray lights the yellow lightsaber and says, "I'm Ray Skywalker." Yep. Yeah. It's Ray. <laughs> it's Ray Shepard now. Now she's oh, Ray yes. Shepard. <laughs> I'm Ray Lost. Yeah. <laughs> remember, guys, Lost. if there's something that happened in Lost and it's a twist you didn't like, uh, a wizard did it. Just remember that. <laughs> yes. Uh, a wizard, wizard did, it. did it. Oh, good times. Um, the Sith knew. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, after you're done uh, subscribing to uh, Dan Merle Movies, uh, come on back here and subscribe to uh, Phantom Entertainment. Hit that like. Hit that bell so you never miss a video. Um, and check out some of the other stuff we're doing. It's a very crowded week. Um, we got a lot of stuff uh, coming up. We have a non-spoiler review of Wonder Woman 84 with Roth and Eric. You can watch now. And uh, a, a video we made where we can prove that Die Hard is a Christmas movie uh, with science. Um, there is now You can shut that discussion down before it even starts, uh, uh, thanks to our help. So uh, go, go click on those after you finish watching this video. Um, and there's still more of this video left. Can you believe it? <laughs> We've got outtakes. Oh, oh do we right. have outtakes? We do. Let's check, let's check it out. Starring Commander Shepard. What did the party of five fingers say to the face? Jack Cryan, the mighty O'Quinn, Lock and Key, Kill Me Kate, the Fugitive, the old Republican Guard, Dude Rogue, Danny Oceanic, the Wrath of Khan, Only Lovers Left Alive, Not So Gentle Ben, Smoking Kills, Gunshot Wounds, <laughs> I'm carrying a nuclear device. What happened? 
<laughs> Jack is there's like getting parallel ready. reality. Yeah, that's right, Jack. I've been running through the jungle toward the sound of gunfire because I don't care about Michael. Jack! I've got it covered, John. He brought Sawyer back. Half dead with a bullet hole in his shoulder, John. Jack, I know this Just is shut not. up. Fantasy Island. Flakes on a plane. Yeah. Journey to the mysterious island. Yeah. <laughs> the lonely island. Son of a bitch! Son of a bitch! Son of a bitch. Look, I know this is network TV and all, but there's still no way a hard drinking ex con grifter like Sawyer would be so uncreative with his profanities. Yeah, yeah, it's no, a good he, point. He's so creative with his nicknames. I think he'd uh, yeah, yeah. put a little he'd effort into the insults. Very colorful so, swearing if, yeah. if yeah. this was HBO, for sure. Just dirty. All right, we also have some uh, questions uh, and comments oh. from viewers like yourselves. Um, I, I'm just going to pick some of these at random. Uh, uh, <laughs> but um, let's do this broad one from Kimberly A. Is Lost still a binge recommendation, or are there specific episodes that you can enjoy out of context? Ooh, I, I, it's that'd be tough to enjoy out of context. Uh, I think yeah. you're gonna have to binge it. Uh, yeah. My, I would say if by the end of season four you're not hooked, like I gotta see how this thing ends, you, you could, you could stop. You could stop. Yeah, if you get to not Penny's boat uh, right. and you're not there, then you're not gonna be there. All right. And uh, Ombre de California writes, uh, "We all agree Desmond Hume was the best character, right?" He was a great character. Yeah, we did not much to say character. in the trailer, which usually means it's a really solid character when there's not mm. much. Uh, yeah, I, I was a big fan of Desmond. I liked him a he lot. He features into one of the standout episodes, I would say, The Constant. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I, I mean, I don't know if he's my favorite character specifically so much as that's one of my favorite episodes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then finally from uh, Johannes Stromer, uh, is there a TV show you've watched all the way through and then wished you hadn't? <laughs> Um. Mm. Dexter. Dexter, sure. I wish I had get like Dexter season four is a perfect series finale, and then it goes on for four more seasons, and I watched them all, and I wish I had not. I remember feeling somewhat relieved that I would not have to continue watching twenty four when it ended, because I was just I was felt obligated to keep watching it. I don't feel that obligation anymore. I've jumped off of a lot of shows, but yeah, when twenty four was over, I was just kind of like, ah, oh, okay, good, we're done. Yeah, I mean, Game of Thrones is an obvious one that that leaps to mind for me. Um, wow, what a what a bummer! And that show has just completely disappeared from public consciousness and my own consciousness. Just it's haven't crazy. even thought about it since yeah. since it ended after being obsessed with it. So it's so crazy. Like I I agree. Like I was like Game of Thrones. I used to think about it like two hours a day minimum. <laughs> like like not like ten years ago. Like a year and a half ago. And now it's like I never think about that show. Yeah, it, it, they they got me back when they the you know they're teasing the stuff about the like the real deep Targaryen prequel show. And I'm like okay, like I don't know. It's starting to like gears are turning my viserises from my viserions from my visenias and whatever's but uh man that that just like cratered everyone's interest yeah. in it if that show yeah. had stuck the landing the casting for the spinoff would have been like our biggest entertainment news of the month like the announcement yeah. that doctor who was gonna be a targaryen we would yeah. i think that's the clearest way to see it because it's a sort of anecdotal like oh people don't talk about that as much but yeah like there will be big news about house of the dragon that would have driven conversation for three days that's just like a blip and it's just like oh but well, you know this one olivia cook's gonna be in it we People haven't are, even covered right. it. it hasn't yeah. even made a script for us yeah. The, the Solid Snake casting made script. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's like, that's crazy because it yeah. used to drive, it was the number one TV show in terms of driving views. Yeah. yeah. It's quite crazy. What a fall from grace. Um, yeah, wow. But what a rise from the ashes for you, Dan Merle. <laughs> Not, I don't know. <laughs> I framed it that way. <laughs> now Jeez. I go back to the grave. <laughs> <laughs> ashes to ashes. Uh, Once they leave California, they're dead to us. Yes. Yeah. That runs at the ending of the Joe Schmo show, Ashes to Ashes, Dust to Dust. Uh, whatever their name was, you're dead to us. Dead and then they'd us. smash the plate with their yeah. with their face on it. That's right. <laughs> but, but that's not the case with Dan. Dan, we hope you'll make many happy returns. And thank you so much for, uh, for I wouldn't say giving us a week off because we're all cramming to uh, for the holidays, but for yeah. taking Lost onto your ample, broad shoulders. Yeah. 
my my pleasure i would i'd be happy to 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 uh take eight months watch another tv show and make another trailer anytime <laughs> watch, watch what you say because uh we've tried to put a lob some weird ones your way so uh yeah uh, we'll i watch. after doctor who i could do anything mash I feel the simpsons invincible. uh yeah <laughs> bring it on friends all right no, sweet sesame Done. street <laughs> finished wait did, did we we did friend. you did friends. I, did, I watched the entirety <laughs> of friends, friends and lost this calendar year yes wow it's, it's, what uh, a year what a year it has been Could oh man be binging any more shows <laughs> <laughs> spencer can i uh, uh can i inside baseball the uh the what we were going to do at the end of the year because at first i was like let's just make dan do it <laughs> what were we gonna do uh the the horse one the horse one the, my, my, little, my Little Pony. Oh, Lucky. My Little Pony. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, we've we've done our uh, our we've got our hooves deep into My Little Pony, but we're not done yet. So that's a yeah. that's a teaser for uh, for calendar year twenty twenty one. But it's not <laughs> for, a, right. for a while, Dan. Dan, next time you say Joe's a good friend, know that uh, behind your back, I was going. Let's just make Dan. Let's just make Dan football. finish yeah. My Little Pony. We've we've watched there's half only, of the nine hundred episodes. Yeah, Let's have Dan do the other four fifty. Fifty episode seasons. It's fine. I, I'm not a good friend. No, I mean you're I, a real I, Applejack, I, Joe. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I have them all memorized anyway, so I'd be happy to. I watch it every night. Two nights, two hours a night, and have for 20 years. I haven't told anybody that until just now. <laughs> classic. Uh, yeah, Applejack uh, is the worst. Yeah, classic pony. Fluttershy, Dan. Agree. You're total Don't Fluttershy of, of the four of us. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, to tease you for next week, um, uh, an extra bonus tease. Uh, it's something that we might not have time to do, but I think we'll we'll find some. Uh, we'll find some time anyways. Uh, we'll figure it out. But it'll take some puzzling. Uh, we'll, oh. we'll, we'll get it together. Ooh. Um, until then, same, uh, uh, same bat channel, same bat place. Uh, we'll see you next time on Honest Trailer Commentaries. Thanks for joining us. Bye, Dan. Bye.